Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we're gonna go over a couple of very interesting topics. First, we gotta cover this one. Finally, Nick Walker did an interview, actually he did a podcast uh, on his YouTube channel, actually his and Guy Cisternino's YouTube channel, Mutant and the Mouth. So I encourage you guys to go over and watch the entire podcast if you're interested, but if you just wanna hear what Nick had to say about his placement at the, at the Arnold Classic, and he kind of did say a couple of things so far on his stories, he wrote a couple of things, but he never really spoke about it. This is the first time that he actually spoke on an actual podcast, on a long-form interview, and here he actually explains how he felt about not winning this Arnold Classic, losing it, and it's kind of what we expected based on his stories. He is let's say, salty, he is not happy that he lost, he doesn't believe that Samson beat him. So I'm gonna show you a part of this video, a little clip where he actually explains how he feels and what he thinks happened at this show or what should have happened. Let me show you. Andrew gets third, you're sitting there, what are you thinking? I, Before, I was like, I got this in the bag. And then they call Samson. I'm not, when I heard that, I was just like, what the... Yeah. You know, because... So far, so good. What he said here is okay. He felt like he won. He didn't watch the show. He didn't see the other guys. When you compete, when you're on stage, you don't look at the other guys. Even if you do, you can't see them from that angle. You can just feel a certain way. And he felt he won. He felt confident. Maybe based on the way the crowd was cheering for him. Maybe based on uh, the way he was confident about his physique. Uh, the fact that he was a previous champion. Stuff like that. But he still didn't see anything. At that point, he felt like he won. And that's fine. That's totally okay. But the next thing he says is rather curious, interesting. Check it out. I, I'm with you when I think, you know, when there's a champ here, you got to take out take the champ. Out. I said it last night um, on the other side. I don't, don't think, and listen, Samson looked incredible. I, I, hats off to Samson, but he didn't take me out. All right, all right, so you heard it. I mean, he said this after the Arnold Classic, afterwards. After all that happened, when he saw the videos, the photos, his opinion right now is that Samson didn't knock him out. And we can argue that. We can argue how close was it between these two guys. But here's the thing. What Nick said about knocking out the champion. Well, first, I completely disagree with that. I don't believe that's how it is. You guys saw that at the Mr. Olympia. Big Remy was the champion and then he was sixth next year. Actually, fifth next year. So, apparently that isn't really the case. Maybe it was a long time ago, back when you had Dorian or Jay Cutler or Ronnie Coleman, but I don't think that's the case these days. And that was the case mainly at the Mr. Olympia. I don't think that was the case at the smaller shows like Arnold Classic, New York Pro or whatever. And there's another thing, probably the biggest factor. Nick is not the reigning champion of the Arnold Classic, no. It is Brandon Curry. Nick Walker is one of the previous Arnold Classic champions. And there were other former Arnold Classic champions at this show, such as William Bonac. Where did William Bonac land? He was seventh. So what does that mean? I mean, was everybody supposed to knock out William Bonac because he won the Arnold Classic? Actually, he won it twice. He won it more times than Nick Walker. No, it doesn't mean that. If Brandon Curry was there, who is actually the current, who was at that point, the current, the reigning Arnold Classic champion, if he was at the show, was everybody else supposed to knock him out in order to beat him? I don't think so. I don't think that's the case. If you are slightly better, you should win. Maybe you can argue that Mr. Olympia should be a little bit different because the winner of the Mr. Olympia is considered the best bodybuilder in the world. Arnold Classic winner is just Arnold Classic winner. Mr. Olympia is the best bodybuilder in the world and it's kind of cool to create a legacy, to be the best in the world for many, many years. So I kind of get that. I mean, from the judge's perspective, it shouldn't be the case. Always the best guy should win, even if he's slightly better. But I get it. If you're talking about the best bodybuilder in the world, the world's bodybuilding champion. But when it comes to smaller shows, and Arnold Classic is a huge show, but it's not the Mr. Olympia. When it comes to these shows, that should not be a factor at all. And also, Nick Walker is not 
the current the, was not the reigning champion and uh, neither was William Bonac was also there both of those guys were former Iron Classic champions so I don't think what Nick is saying makes much sense also I kind of do think that Samson pretty much knocked him out like sure there weren't many knockout shots knockout poses but overall Samson had least amount of weaknesses by far and that's why he knocked everybody else out in my opinion I mean, it was it was a hard pill to swallow, you know, because not wanting to even do the Arnold, you know, to start. And then, you know, they have the prize money and, you know, they're like, hey, we, you know, we want you to do it. And it ended up being probably one of the hardest preps I've ever done in a short amount of time. Um, and being, knowing I already won this show and, and seeing how much the prize money raised, this show meant more to me at the at this moment than more than it did to the, than the Olympia. And this is also something I found very interesting that Nick Walker said. Basically, this is like the overall impression that I got from all the stories, all the posts that he made so far, all the comments. It seems like he feels like he worked like harder than everybody else. And he deserved to win this show because it was very hard for him. Also, it's interesting that he says right here that Arnold Classic people called him and, and wanted him to compete at his show after they upped the prize money. So he felt entitled to win this show because they wanted him there. He didn't plan on prepping, on competing another time after the Mr. Olympia. So he went from being relaxed in the offseason to prep mode. Uh, it was very hard, as he says. Uh, he suffered, he did a lot of work, and he thought he deserved to win. But the other guys did the same. I mean, Samson competed at the Mr. Olympia and also at the Arnold Classic last year. So he prepped, he worked probably harder than Nick. But, you know, that's not the point. The point is the guy that looked the best was supposed to win, in my opinion. That is without a question, Samson Dauda. But as you can see, as you can hear, Nick Walker doesn't agree with that decision. He feels like he was robbed. He doesn't understand why he lost. He thought he came in much better than the Olympia and that he should have won this show. But it is what it is. He didn't win it. He feels like he should have though. But whatever you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section. Give me your thoughts on what Nick just said in this podcast. All right, next up, we have an off-season. Actually, a, let, let's call it a prep update of Regan Grimes, who is 16 weeks out of a show i'm not sure which show is in 16 weeks but he started his prep and as you can see he's 300 pounds right now so what do i think about his physique let's analyze it now first of all he's 300 pounds do i think that's big enough for regan grimes for his height for his frame no i don't think so i mean he says 300 pounds is starting to feel comfortable which is what i was going for with taking a last year's olympia off I don't feel the need to gain much more weight. From here, I'm going to continue bringing up weaker body parts and improve body composition 16 weeks out. So he's kind of planning on like growing into the show, you know, getting uh, leaner and improving at the same time. I mean, is that really a good strategy? I think that's kind of what he was doing so far. And like, I mean, sure, it got him to a certain point, but at this point... I feel like he needs to push his weight, I mean, much more than this. And here, as you can see, he doesn't look like super hard, he doesn't look um, like blasting full, he looks underwhelming. And I'm guessing, I mean, if his plan is to actually improve during the prep, I'm guessing he's off right here, and he's gonna start, you know, using more stuff as he's prepping, and that is kind of the way to to actually you know make some progress while cutting but is his end result gonna be something insane something crazy that we haven't saw so far is he gonna be completely transformed and like a really really massive really big i don't think so and based on this uh, starting point i'm not really super optimistic about regan uh, when i'm talking about regan uh, like uh, his potential i'm talking about being one of the top guys at the olympia I'm sure he can win a pro show and qualify for the Mr. Olympia. Don't get me wrong, guys. I'm not saying he can't win a pro show. I'm just talking about his potential in terms of being like a top five Olympian. Because that's what we expect from Regan for many years now. I mean, he has the shape. He has the structure. He does have like the size. He has the potential to be uh, big enough for these open top guys. 
but there is still a lot more work to be done and I don't see that he has done all that work in the past off season. Especially if you compare him to this, now we can call him a mass monster, basically, Quinton Araya. Look at this guy, I mean, look at how much he grew, he is freaking humongous right now. I mean, the last time we saw an update of him, actually when we heard what his weight was, it was, I think, 340 pounds. And at this point, I think he looks bigger, I think he's over 350. And he's a taller guy, just like Regan. I think he's like six foot, maybe six foot one. Regan is about similar height. I think he's six foot, so maybe there's like one inch difference. So for these taller guys, they need to weigh above 300 because guys like Nick Walker at five foot seven, the top Olympians, are around 300 pounds in the off season. So these guys that are taller, they need to be at least like 350. I mean, in order to compete against the top three, top five Olympia guys. So they need more size, and that is exactly what Quinton Araya is doing. He's doing it very successfully. Look at this freaking guy. He's freaking humongous right now. Uh, his back is his weakness, and I'm sure it's going to be weak still. But did he grow, man? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, he grew. He looks really big right now. And I don't know what he's taking, what he's doing right now. Can he also make progress in his prep? We'll see. But did he make progress? For sure he did. Definitely he did. Look at him. Oh, and I just checked the comments in hopes to find the answer of what his weight is right now. And we got an answer. The question is weight. And Matt Jensen, who is, by the way, his coach right now, says 350. 350, whatever, but that's what it means. 350. Just like I guessed, 350. This is what proper off-season looks like. This is what you look like when you make crazy progress. And I can't wait to see this guy actually peeled. And I mean, now that he's prepped by Matt Jensen, I'm pretty sure he's gonna peak properly because that's what Matt is known for. And I'm sure he's gonna stay really big, really full, and he's gonna get shredded. And this guy is one of those guys just like Regan with a ton of potential and it seems like this guy is fulfilling that potential. Uh, I can expect him definitely to win a pro show this year, qualify for the Mr. Olympia. How well will he do at the Mr. Olympia? I can't guess that right now. I need to see him in a pro show. Once he wins it, I'll have an idea. But right now, I think he's gonna win. He was close to winning a pro show last year. I think he was third in a couple of shows like Tampa Pro uh, against Akim and, and Kamal. But I think now with all the progress, I think he's gonna win a pro show and qualify for Mr. Olympia. Uh, can he crack the top 10? Maybe. I don't know. Let's wait and see him at the pro show first. And then we will guess what he's gonna do at the Mr. Olympia. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna support me and my channel, just click on the link down below and buy any of the old school lab supplements. But please just use the code EVAN. It would mean so much to me. And I'm sure you guys would enjoy the old school labs products. Thank you so much, guys. All the best and bye-bye.